Hey everyone, Catalyst here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing well, and I hope that you all had a relaxing Thanksgiving with friends and family if you celebrate that here in the United States. I had a really nice week with my family, but now I am back and ready to hit the road with 2042 content. Speaking of Battlefield 2042, last week DICE announced a pair of updates in a long blog post that included fixes to spread, the transport vehicles that have been running rampant across the game, and hit registration among other things. But the blog post also hinted at and talked about the implementation of other legacy features such as a traditional scoreboard and server browser, although it's quite honestly laughable that a scoreboard is considered to be a legacy feature by DICE, but I digress. I think that changes to the entire menu UI in addition to that is necessary and should be a top priority for DICE moving forward. You know, after they fix the thousands of other things wrong with the game. <laughs> so today, I kind of just wanted to take a short video to talk about why these changes are important and why what they have currently in place is not sufficient enough. I know it was probably very difficult to see, but the thumbnail for today's video featured some UI concept art from Just Frags, who graciously agreed for it to be in the thumbnail. You should definitely go check out his Twitter. It has a bunch of cool UI concepts and designs for Battlefield 2042, including stat pages, and I think this morning, he actually posted a concept for an end of round screen, so he's got some good stuff. Go check it out, I'll leave the link in the description for those of you that are interested. So to start off with the scoreboard, one of my biggest gripes with the current iteration of the scoreboard is that since we cannot see the stats of enemy players nor the players on our own team, it's currently very hard to discern whether or not there is a cheater in the lobby, and I don't know about the rest of you, but that doesn't really sit well with me for a couple of reasons. So, as some of you know, I switched to PC this past January after playing Battlefield primarily on console for the past seven years or so, and I was instantly slapped in the face when I started on PC by one of Battlefield 5's biggest problems, and that was the lack of an effective anti-cheat. Heading into the launch of Battlefield 2042, I think it's fair to say that a good anti-cheat was on the top of the list of desired features for the game by a lot of players, not just for PC players, but for console players as well, considering that the game would be cross-platform and is cross-platform. Now, of course, luckily for all you folks on console, you could just switch a little setting off in your settings and be done with it if there was an abundance of cheaters in the game, but that's just the thing. We don't really know how well the anti-cheat is working because of the scoreboard. Battlefield 2042 uses easy anti-cheat, which certainly is better than having no anti-cheat, don't get me wrong, but the results may vary. Some games that you may be familiar with that also use easy anti-cheat include Apex Legends, Dead by Daylight, Hell Let Loose, Gears of War 5, Insurgency Sandstorm, just to name a few, which in the case of some of those games, the anti-cheat is pretty effective, whereas in others like Apex Legends and Dead by Daylight, cheating is becoming more and more problematic as of late in those titles. Now obviously this video isn't an expose on the effectiveness of easy anti-cheat, but with all that being said, it's hard to tell which side of the fence Battlefield 2042 falls on because we can't see teammates' stats on the scoreboard and we cannot tell whether or not a player is cheating. Which brings up another issue, which is that Battlefield 2042 has no alt shot either, so even if we suspected another player of cheating, we cannot accuse nor can we ask the other team if that player is cheating. And I don't know about you, but the whole out of sight, out of mind design that this incorporates does not sit well with me as a consumer. With the current scoreboard, it's also very hard to discern how your team is doing overall and where you fit in amongst the massive swarm of players, and I just personally don't understand this or enjoy this. I don't know if this was done to shelter players' feelings for those that are on the bottom half of the scoreboard, or if there was a reason to do this to put place of an emphasis on kills, I'm not really sure, but it just seems unnecessary, and you don't really know how well your team is performing, and likewise, you don't know how well you are performing in comparison to the rest of your team. I have the slight feeling that the reason the scoreboard is the way it is is because of technical difficulties. I don't know the limitations and problems that putting a scoreboard with massive amounts of text on screen would provide, because think about it, if you have the traditional scoreboard with 64 four slabs of text for each team all on screen at once, I would not be surprised if that is the core issue as to why we have this snowflake watered down version of this legacy feature. The other feature that needs addressing is the need for a traditional server browser in Battlefield 2042. I'm sorry, but what was DICE thinking here? 
Removing the traditional server browser from Battlefield has only made matchmaking more frustrating and confusing. I'm going to try to not make this a rant, but I'm just going to quickly brush through known issues in the game that are caused by or affiliated with the game being forced matchmaking as opposed to using the server browser. One of the first things that comes to mind is that joining on friends mid-game is nearly impossible because you get stuck in a queue when trying to join the lobby and you have to wait until that round is over in order to be included as part of the party. There are a collection of breakthrough servers that are completely bugged and the game will never end. I'm sure most of you have experienced this bug at some point in your playing time of Battlefield 2042, but because there is no server browser, you can't just write down the server number, travel to a different server, and no not to come back. No, instead you have no control over what server you will join and DICE will oftentimes place you back in the same bug server. Multiple times in a row. I think my record is six times in a row at this point. Another annoyance with the lack of a server browser is the fact that you cannot choose which maps you're going to play on. Everything is chosen for you. So when you have a brand new game that is just released and players are trying to experience all of that content, why am I constantly being sent to play discarded defense on Breakthrough? Hmm? I have found over the last few weeks that a lot of my gameplay experiences in a play session usually revolve around two or three of the same maps, which becomes incredibly repetitive and boring, and over time, I think most of my play sessions have ended just because I got really, really bored playing the same thing over and over again. You also can't switch teams, so if you don't like playing defense, you can't switch to offense and vice versa. And you can't switch teams for balancing purposes either, which speaking of the balance of games in 2042, it's often really lopsided anyways. You can't leave the server and come back in hopes of getting on the other team, and you are thrown into the game without any real care, leading to one-sided, unbalanced matches. Out of all the features that were removed from previous titles, I think this one is the most egregious to me because it presents so many more issues, all in the name of brain-dead simplicity. Play a game, move on to the next one, without the press of a button. The player experience in Battlefield 2042 outside of the actual gameplay loop is extremely poor, and I think that's reflected in just how many people prefer the portal content over the all-out war content, of course, because there is also a server browser and many, many more enticing options to choose from. And of course, there are the small things that I've been alluding to throughout the video but won't really talk about in depth today, like the menu UI being overly complicated and wasteful. UIs are supposed to simplify as much information as possible and be immediately intuitive. They shouldn't need to be figured out by the community. If you need to ask how you're supposed to do something, as opposed to just kind of knowing where to go by taking a single glance, the UI is poor, and that's reflected a lot in 2042. UI is very much based on trends. That's why most phone apps have similar UIs. 2042's UI breaks many trends and therefore is annoying and time consuming to figure out, as opposed to other games like Call of Duty where you just kind of know how everything works instantly. The settings tab has multiple settings that overlap onto different tabs for example, so you don't know if you have actually tuned your settings correctly, and supposedly now the mouse input bug has returned with a vengeance because PC settings emulate controller settings, yeah, it's just not all around a very good look. But that's the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to get out a small piece of content. If you enjoyed it, drop a like and leave a comment. If you made it to the end, it helps me tremendously in the algorithm. If you enjoyed it just that much, you should consider subscribing. I will be making tons of 2042 content moving forward. I stream four nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday on my Twitch at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Once again, thank you all for watching. My name is Catalyst, and I will see you all another time.